Well, as you can see here, the great pumpkin is coming to a whole lot more good. This is the Firebird Friday video. We're going to call it the front end Firebird Friday video because we're going to work on putting the front bumper and all these goodies all laid out here. We've got the bumper supports, the frame supports, front filler panel. Got a couple of grills, of course, the bumper. And these are my new headlights here. I hope those are going to work out great. And I've got all the hardware laid out. And I hope that I can remember how this goes back together. Ha, ah, okay. Well, anyway, um, we got everything all sandblasted and clean and ready for reassembly. But we're going to work on getting this together goes on the front of the car. I think I've done so far, we'll put some tape. I like I say, tape is cheap, paint's expensive. Well, that's what we're gonna do here, help protect the paint so I don't damage it during installation. We've done a really good job on the car so far, so I hate to mess up now. But we're gonna start with here. I'm gonna hang these two front horns or front, uh, I guess front fender, with front bumper supports on the frame first, and then we'll start working our way through the rest of the pieces. And before we get started, as you saw, I have everything all laid out. These are the bumper supports that we're gonna put on first. These have these special like uh, knurled washers, bolts, and everything. I got a bolt kit from Ames. It had the majority of the bolts, but not everything. So I got the ones that mount the this piece to the frame. I also got the one that mounts the bumper to all the rest of the pieces, but didn't come with everything. I did buy these new rubber supports. It actually goes between the fender brace and the top of the bumper here. Now this is just an ignore everything I say from the very beginning. These little rubber biscuits, do that first. Bolt it right to this whole top panel because getting to the back side to put that nut on, I guess when I tore this car apart, it was so rusted and fell apart and didn't put much into stock. But what actually happens is you cannot gain access to get the nut on. You get your finger barely in there. I took the headlight bracket loose and I finally wrestled it in there and fought it and I finally got it to be tightened up. But I'm telling you, probably just go ahead and mount those right there to that upper filler panel when the very first step. Now I'll finish with the rest of the video. So I do have those ready to go, but it didn't come with the hardware, the nuts. So I had some of those. Now these headlight supports. Now, obviously there's a left and a right. There's actually a big old R stamped in on for the right side, which is the passenger side, same as the driver's side. But just an FYI, these four buckets the headlights go in are different. They're not the same. You ever see those cars where the headlights where it has like a T3 ball, a Wagner ball, but they're all twisted funny? It's because they got these things mixed up. Now, where do they go? I never took these apart besides sandblasting and put them right back in and had them labeled. There's no part numbers on them, so I may have to figure out a way to help you guys put those together. But the biggest thing is, just get your bulbs, lay the bulbs in there, line up the two screws, and make sure everything looks horizontal with your left and your right. That's typically how I get the answer. Now, these are 1968 grills. There's between 67 and 68, just the color. 67, the grill is silver. 68, the grill is black. Um, now, new bumper. These are my cool headlights. Now, these are the, the grill support brackets. Got those all cleaned up, sandblasted. I got a bunch of new hardware and bolts all laid out. These little filler panels go in there, too. But first things first, let's get those put in there right now. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. These are the part that goes onto the frame. This piece is a whole lot easier now if you go ahead and attach it loosely to here. Now, there's obviously a left and a right, but you can't get it wrong. It's almost idiot-proof. Well, I say almost, but it really only fits on the one way. This is the passenger side. Then the driver's side would be a mirrored image of it. But you'll use a carriage style bolt. It has a square on the back side of it. I just drop those in here. Really simple while it's off. Get those in position. Right, Tip this thing up and we'll get the nut started on it here. Now there's adjustments here for up, down, front, to back. Uh, so the same thing, let's get these started. Just get them loose for now and started. Now then, now having nice new clean hardware makes this a whole lot easier. Now when we were taking this thing a car apart, we had to cut a lot of these bolts out because, well, they just rusted up. Now we'll get now we'll go ahead and install this to the subframe on the front. Now it has its own special hardware too. A large bolt nut and a special like knurled or has a bunch of teeth on the washers. Now from the factory they put the washers here on the outside. Uh, so I'm gonna do the same thing with the bolt that goes through the frame rail here in the front. And then just go ahead and start the nuts loosely again because you can see this thing slotted for adjustment. So we're just gonna get this thing here just to kind of hand tight where it has some drag so we can move things around. We'll go ahead and start with the front bolt. Fish is down inside here like so bang it up all the pretty paint. Now there's probably several ways to install the front bumpers on these cars. Um, there's some people like to put all these brackets all together to put the front bumper on the car so there's probably no right or wrong way just I guess how you prefer to do it. 
I figured this this way shows all the pieces and the hardware and how to put it together in case you know you wanted to know some of the pieces that have like sub assemblies done. So we'll go ahead and stab this back bolt up. You can see how fast you through the frame there. We'll get these things snugged up. Alright, there we go. Now just so these are just hand tightened for now. But if I were to move this bracket around, you can see the main support. It's kind of staying where I put it. That's gonna work for what I need to do. And the same thing, we'll maybe snug these up a little bit more. But being a carriage bolt, you only have to turn the nut, which is kind of handy. Um, that ought to work. The next piece, then, we're we'll probably go ahead and grab the main upper piece. But I need to go ahead and get the headlight supports bolted to that first. All right, now here's the problem now. I was taking the bolts out. I put them in here for sandblasting and storage. I want to take this bolt out and the little nut insert. Well, broke. It's old. 50 years old. It happens. Uh, I saw some on the other ones. These are your license plate uh, nuts. It goes on pretty much any car. And this is actually works as a good sub as opposed to buying an entire new headlight bucket support. You know, this is going to be a little more tricky, but I can slide this thing in here. And then my way, when you go to put it all together, so that you can just put your bolts back through it and put it back together this way. We'll just snap this thing in here. Now this will work just the same and mount your hardware. So a quick little fix on a 67, 68 fire where those little nuts break, no big deal, get your little license plate one. Now that's been solved. Now we can go ahead and mount these to this upper filler panel, upper panel. Now you could actually put these in afterwards. I just find it's a lot easier to get that bolt that hides back in here right now as opposed to doing it later. Um, now of course, you get the left to the left and the right with the right. So here. Now these go in the hole back here. Now, now, get this started. now the one I just repaired goes on that bracket we put on earlier. That's where it attaches to. And we'll get the same thing. We'll just get these snug as you can tell this has a slot to move back and forth. And of course an additional side note, this is another carriage bolt with a little speed nut on it. Definitely get that in here now because there's no way to get a wrench on the back side once that's all installed. So get that side down. We'll do the same here to the other. Got those snug. There's another reason why I also put those on there first. If I go put this on the car, you will see it'll help keep this thing from wanting to dump forward because it'll actually lay the headlight support on there. Now what we're doing, there's a stud there on the driver's side. We'll get that lined up through that hole there. And we'll do the same thing here on the passenger side. Now at this point, these are 3 8 16. I'll go ahead and just start that one on there. This is why you have to put that little speed nut on there. If not, that, that carriage bolt would fall in there, wouldn't actually get, wouldn't grab, we'll be able to snug that thing up. And if I lean this thing forward, now our little bracket here, the headlight support, it's leaning against this, keeps this thing from dumping way down. The thing I want to show you down here is that bottom bolt here. That's the one I said it's kind of leaning against, it's kind of supporting everything. You come down here from the back side, and I'll show you how to put that in. I'm going to get these started, kind of like the top two bolts. We're just going to get them just snug, but it goes in through here. Fortunately, it should tighten up okay. There we go. And just get that bolt snug. So we, what we'll have to do, though, when we get this thing all said and done, this thing has a side-to-side -side adjustment. That's how we're going to get the headlights centered in the grill. So I'll go ahead and do the other. Right now, the next part actually is actually going to put the grills here in there below that bumper support and put these little filler panels in, the little rubber end pieces that fill in between the bumper and the fender itself. And then the, these grills are held in by three bolts. One, two, and the third one is up underneath here. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of adjustment to the grills, but I'm going to get them put into place. Start those three bolts on each side, but leave them loose because you have just a little bit of wiggle room. And then after that, we'll work on getting the chrome part of the bumper wrestled up into place. What I wanted to show you here, of course, I talk about the one, two, and then the third bolt holds this little rubber space that goes in between the bumper and the fender there. So that bolt there just started. The bottom goes in once you get that back together. So that's not a priority yet, but just let you know that's how it stacks in there. Again, just place the grills in place loosely. Um, kind of check the opening of the headlights, looking pretty good so far. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and grab the chrome bumper and get it slid over that. And then that's when you can actually attach the lower part of the grill, these little barbs here. There's one on each side of the grill here. There's little adapters. Again, that goes in afterwards. So we'll go ahead and get the, I guess the chrome bumper slid into place, see how close we are. 
Now this is going to slide between the these little ears slide between the grill and this upper support. And I'll put some bolts in to kind of pin it off into place. Hopefully. At least that's how I see it working in my head. That's actually working pretty good. Now, I got bolts orientated this way originally, so I'm going to follow suit. I put some tape on the bumper for now just to keep from scratching the paint up because I'm obviously going to need a lot of adjustments. This is just to get me close. This bolt here was kicking my butt. I'm gonna be honest with you. I guess I probably missed a step or forgotten, but took these two bolts loose here out of the grill. Then I was able to take the grill and then show it down here, pull the grill forward and get my hand behind it. Then I could feed the bolts up behind the grill. Oh, of course, that camera probably didn't pick it up so good, but right through here. And I could push the bolt right through here, and that's how I got the bolt started. So. Anyway, I think I messed that part up, but just so in case you know how to do that, well, maybe remember to put that bolt in a different part of the sequence. Not 100% sure, but now I can restart those bolts there. And evidently, look at this gap. We didn't even get it anywhere near close. I'm going to bring this bumper. It needs to be pulled in. It looks like it needs to go to the passenger side quite a bit, but this is just a rough just start. Just getting things in here. So that's why you leave everything loose, and then we'll finally dial everything in super tight and clean. All right, well, let's climb under the front of the car. Let's talk about these little things right here. There's four of these total right about here and right about here on each grill. These are the little bottom supports. These are what actually holds the bottom of this grill in place. It'll actually wiggle around. This is what we're going to put in next. I'll show you here on the back side. Hopefully I can get in here and I'll show you what we got going on. But up inside here, you'll see it right there. What has to happen is this here has to slide over that stud. It's a rubber bushing around it. It goes like this, and then of course now you just put your carriage bolt through this hole here. You got this one, and we've got one out here. It goes up inside. I've already got it started in my hand, but it goes up in here. I don't know if we can really get the camera in there or not, but I uh, really can't see it. But you have to trust me. All right, here's that rubber surround thing, but the actual little brace there, this goes on first, then the rubber stacks on top, then you put your nut and put your bolt through. And while the bumper is hanging down real low here in the front, you can actually get in here and tighten this thing up with a ratchet. And once it's all tucked up in place, once you put the bumper into place, you cannot get in here and access that. So while this bumper's hanging low, this is when you secure that. Now these ones, we can still leave loose because we can get wrenches in here from this side to tighten those up, no problem. So let's get this one tight and I'll get this one here snugged up for the grill. And of course, what we're gonna try to do when I put the grill in, I'm gonna try to keep us tucked up as close as we can to the chrome. Now this is an OER front bumper, so the fitment's uh, mediocre. I mean, I, I don't know how much better it was from the factory, but you can see a little bit of a gap and there's not much I can probably do about that. But overall though, that new chrome bumper looks a 10,000 times better than what was on here. All right, the well, bumper's looking a whole lot better now. The grills are installed and looking okay. Now what we need to do next, so this is the part where really having a helper is gonna come into advantage because I'm gonna put this bumper back into place. Now we're kind of hanging off the front and hanging out there kind of low. I'm gonna be able to pull this bumper up. My boy here, he's gonna give me a hand. We're gonna get this thing tied up, put into place. Really doing it by yourself, you could probably wrestle it and get it to go at some point, but I'm gonna try to hold this up as close as I can to the body. And we're gonna get a nice parallel line between the bumper and the fender and get the height matching the fender. Side to side, we can still adjust a little bit here. We have a little wiggle room here in these pieces here. In addition, that little corner brace here can actually help hold it side to side just the same. Then once we get those items secure, then we'll come in here, then we'll actually tighten down the grill, and then we'll fine tune and tighten up all of our hardware. Everything at this point is still actually left loose. So we get the camera set up, we'll get this bumper set, and then we'll get the bolts tightened up. Cool. All right. Now, see about what we're going to do. I'm trying to close this gap here. And kick everything in the process. <laughs> and get the gap. I'm gonna do this side, then I'm gonna angle them both back and forth some. Um, yeah, I'll do that then. Both of them snug? Yep. I 
Yeah, it'll work. I was tightening this up here, and that'll hold the bumper. Yeah. Okay. Well, see how that looks. That wasn't too bad. Well, as for this adjustment, it's not looking too bad. We still got to tighten here and here, but I'm going to push the bumper towards the passenger side because we're, it looks actually pretty decent, but let me show you what's happening here on the driver's side. Well, we're, we're hanging over quite a bit. So I, and there's no way to really change the width of the entire bumper. So we're going to split the difference. I'm going to shift it towards the passenger side. Then we're going to secure these two nuts here on the top. That'll help hold it. But really what's going to help hold it is this here when I put that little triangle piece in the corner. But I'm going to lean on here pretty good and have them tighten that up. Yeah, all right, well, I'm going to lean on here really good. Have your assistant then snug that up. I'm going to jump over the other side and do the same thing on that one. Get that one snugged up. And there's the three bolts down lower. Let me go ahead and I'll do those here in a minute, but they're, they're probably pretty close. Okay. Well, that's not, not all the way there, but watch this. I can push on this thing and watch the gap here between the fender and that piece. So I'm going to have to put those corner braces on to get it to hold completely, but making progress. Now, at this point now, there's those adjustments down here. These three down here, we haven't snugged up yet. Now, if I really wanted to fine tune this bumper, you know, twist it in and out, I could use that there, but that's actually nice and perpendicular and parallel to the edge of the fender and the bumper. So I, I say at this point, it won't take me long, but if you're doing yours, snug up those three and like check that side out and then snug up those three. And once that's done, then I'll show you the trick to putting these little corner things in. Now that we're happy with our bumper alignment, now we need to actually set the headlight buckets side to side in here. That was these three bolts here, if you recall. One, the second one's over there, and the third one is down here. Um, this, we'll go ahead and adjust that. Now the thing we'll do though, I can only tighten up the top two. Don't tighten that bottom one up yet until we shift this bumper over. That way it has a little more wiggle room that won't be fighting us that much. But I'd say at this point though, I've actually got it really close. These are nice and centered. So I'll go ahead and tighten up the top two bolts. But if I needed to adjust this thing, like this bucket was over to the left or to the right too far, you can actually adjust that side to side. Like I said, these are just, just need snugged up. So we can do the top two, but I'm gonna leave that bottom one loose until I'm happy with the bumper side to side. Now we'll jump to the other side, take a look here in the front. What, put, bring the camera down here. I'll show you what has to happen though. But let's say if you wanted to move that thing side to side. So we just get it nice and centered, which is about there. And just snug up the top too. Now we'll go ahead and put these corner braces in. Now these are those rubber and metal biscuit thingies, whatever you want to call them. They reside here in this hole and poke through here. Now this gives you a little bit of a side to side adjustment, I hope. We're about to find out, but how you get this all set in here, go ahead and get this thing about like so. It needs to tuck it behind the fender. Put this thing into place. Now this is just an ignore everything I say from the very beginning. These little rubber biscuits, do that first. Bolt it right to this whole top panel because getting to the back side to put that nut on, I guess when I tore this car apart, it was so rusted and fell apart, didn't put much into stock. But what actually happens is you cannot gain access to get the nut on. You get your finger barely in there. I took the headlight bracket loose and I finally wrestled in there and fought it and I finally got it to be tightened up. But I'm telling you, probably just go ahead and mount those right there to that upper filler panel when the very first step. Now I'll finish with the rest of the video. Now, after wrestling us into place, that's where I learned about this debacle. I screwed up there. Okay, I guess that happens. Um, Put these screws in next. Now they actually go here and here, the large Phillips head screws. Normally these get left out and someone puts a regular bolt in there. I guess it clears, but this gives you a little better hood clearance when the hood is shut. But they just go right in here like this. And those, there's no real adjustment and those just go snug. Now what goes here is the actual bump stop or the rubber adjustable bump for the hood. It goes like so. And then a regular bolt, which there should be a strut from here to the fender, but I haven't painted those yet. So I'm just gonna put this in here for like an alignment pin for now. And that's the same as this side. Then we'll jump over the other side and do the same thing. Well, so what have we learned? That uh, I'm not perfect. A few mistakes were made, like putting the little rubber biscuits in, 
a few steps, I guess you could say. But the idea of these videos isn't to tell you exactly how to do it, but at least get you to think. Put some thought into it. Show you some insight. Show you behind the scenes things. And if I can save you some of the headaches by stumbling back through it again myself, well, that's what we did here today. I guess I'm trying to those things. If I did them every day, probably I'd remember all the bits and pieces. But end result, we got it on. Everything's lined up. Looks good. This is an OER front bumper on a 10-point scale. I give it like a 7 or an 8. There's some things that are just kind of, eh. But, again, the Repop world, this is probably 10,000 times better than what you could have got years ago. The best solution would be re-chrome the original. But this original was in very, very poor condition. There wasn't much that I could do with it. So this was our best solution. And I'll tell you, it looks really good. Um, next go around, maybe it's final top time. I'm doing all the little things. I'm trying to put that off because I just... Haven't quite found the motivation to do it, but it's going to happen. So appreciate you following me on the journey. Anything you'd like to see, let me know just the same. But if not, we'll keep plugging away on the final details. And this thing's going to be on the road very soon.